Hey, what's up, everybody? Chris Mohan here. Uh, doing a little impromptu road reflection uh, from from the from the car. Uh, I live here now. This is this is my home. I have uh, Purell the vehicle. Uh, I park it in a garage, uh, and then I bathe it in a in a sanitizer constantly. Uh, and then my trunk right now is just filled. It's just filled with uh, with the with the sanitizer, uh, and I sleep in that at night now. That's what that's how I'm surviving through all of it. And then I get out in the morning and I shake it out like a dog, uh, like a wet puppy is what I do in the morning. And I just kind of spread that spread that Purell around everywhere. You know, just get it out there. That's what I'm trying to do. That's that's how I'm helping the world. Is uh, and then when I drive the car, the mists. The mists of uh, of the sanitizer, uh, well, uh, well, they go everywhere, and uh, uh, that that helps the air become uh, purified. You know, well, that's what I choose to believe. Uh, because uh, fuck it, I mean, everybody's ignoring science, right? That's kind of <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not doing any of that. Uh, I'm I'm okay. Uh, for those that are concerned, I am okay. I hope you're okay. I hope you're taking care of yourself. Uh, I hope you're taking care of your loved ones. Uh, I wanted to do this video because yesterday uh, my my brain was going at about a uh, thousand miles per minute um, because of all the shit that's going on. Here's the crazy thing about this whole situation with COVID-19. Uh, the novel coronavirus. I mean, things are changing uh, virtually on an hourly basis. Virtually on an hourly basis. Um, and that is a result specifically uh, of, of this 24-hour bullshit news cycle that we have. Uh, this, this non-journalistic entertainment, let's scream at each other, goddamn nonsense that we live in that's what that's a result of for sure for sure um it's just we constantly need to be plugged in constantly need to be plugged in let's let's be let's what, what's happening is it a, when is it going to be done when is it it's i don't know when it's going to be done and you know what the reality is? Neither does the motherfucking CDC, neither does the FDA, neither does the Trump administration, neither does fucking Joe Biden or Bernie Sanders or Tulsi Gabbard. Nobody knows when this is going to be done. You want to know why? Because when they had an opportunity to figure out when this possibly could be done, uh, they didn't fucking take it. And by they, I mean the FDA and the CDC. There are stories and reports say, uh, that were coming out. Uh, I mentioned this in a previous video about the Cleveland Clinic had a had an early detection and a testing service. Um, uh, research schools in in Washington State also had it in February, early February. And the CDC and the FDA said, ah, "No, no, no! Our big, our dicks are so big. They're just so big. We just have really big balls." And everybody's like, "What does that have to do with? It? No, our dicks are big." You don't understand. We have huge cocks, and that was a that was the CDC and the FDA's response uh, to people coming up being like, "Hey, we can help people. We know how to help people. We can actually get this done, and we we can come up with a plan to like save Americans." Uh, and the FDA was like, "Look at how big our fucking dicks are! God damn it! How dare you!" And they just ignored them. Uh, no one cares how big your dick is. Uh, no one's ever cared how big your dick is. Uh, this is not about your dicks. So, uh, so the speed of things that are moving, it's very fast. It's very fast. Um, you know, uh, a lot of a lot of things are spreading around. There, there were some reports saying that uh, this thing is going to keep going till July. Uh, somebody told me that. I was just like, that's crazy. Um, somebody was saying this thing will be done in three weeks. Okay. If we, if we figure out, um, if we talk to Korea, if we get all of our minds together on a global scale and figure out an early detection system and figure out uh, free testing for everybody, 
uh, offer everybody some help and some aid, then yeah, I think we can get through this in about three weeks, and uh, and we will we will be fine. We will be fine. Uh, I was hearing eight weeks. Um, the governor of Ohio shut down all bars and restaurants for eight weeks, apparently. Uh, and you know that that at this point that would mean that I would lose uh, another week of gigs <laughs> if I could make this about myself for just a brief moment. Um, but the larger context is I'm sure there's lots of other people that are going to be losing gigs. I had a friend of mine, um, uh, Jason Hurd from uh, Lori Creek, just sent me a message about Seattle shutting down uh, all of their live uh, live events and uh, it was like 400 uh, like close to five hundred dollars I'm pretty sure per artist uh, five hundred dollars per artist um, is what they're losing it's a lot of money it's a lot of motherfucking money uh, so we have no answers um, right now uh, I you know it's like I can't do any booking I can't do any real show promoting because uh, I don't know how long this thing is going to last either. No one really has any answer. So here's here's my recommendation. Stop freaking out about the timeline. We don't have one. That's where things are. So freaking out about the, the timeline is not particular, particularly going to be um, effective, efficient, or helpful. That's my recommendation to you guys. Stop fucking worrying about when this thing is going to be done. Because we don't know. We don't have an answer. Right now, uh, the next three weeks are out. We are we are going to have to be uh, safe and precautionary. So if you do go out, you know, get, when you get back to your house, just wash your hands, clean yourself up, uh, use some sanitizer, use some soaps, um, you know, and, uh, and just uh, just be careful. Um, don't visit grandpa and grandma. Uh, this might not be the best time to do that shit. Um, and uh, and take care of each other. And and you know what the thing was, uh, I mean Sunday night. I was I was back in Pittsburgh on Sunday night. I was off tour, and immediately uh, I was starting to see a bunch of stuff on social media about uh, funds that are started specifically for artists. Um, because uh, I'm not the o- I know I'm not the only fucking working artist. Uh, I do this shit full time, and I depend on touring as a large source of income it's a big it's a big source of income for me right so i and i'm not the only one i fucking 100 percent know that uh so you know if it's usually what it is is if it's oh man sorry i was a railroad if if it's happening to me i have to assume uh i am a i am a uh, small case in a larger uh pool of information that's that's usually what I assume if it's happening to me it's probably happening to uh, a lot of other people and some other people I I mean they're not as vocal as I am about it they kind of keep it to themselves because this is difficult to kind of come out and be like I'm struggling and I need help is not particularly something that people are um, encouraged to do right it took me a long time to sit there and be like I need help and uh, and actually ask for help when I need it and then I kind of realized that that's what we need to do Anyway, um, so in Pittsburgh alone, there's a there's a fund that got started um, that that I applied for because I don't I you know right now it's three weeks it could go up to five weeks if it's five weeks I'm losing thousands and thousands of dollars that's just income that I'm not making at all um, and I have to assume that's the same situation for a lot of artists I I know I know Ron Placone and Graham Elwood canceled their Florida dates because of this thing. You know, Lee Camp had to Lee had to cancel his Arizona gigs, and I, and I was going to open for that. Eleanor Goldfield was going to open for that. Um, I know Church of Satire Comedy Club has shut down. Uh, the Comedy Closet has shut down. Teehee's Comedy Club shut down. Robin Theater shut down. These are all venues that I have personal connections with, that I go and perform at, that um, you know are. Are small businesses owned by uh, average working class Americans? This is who's getting affected, day in and day out. I'm seeing more and more of this. Fucking service industry people. I'm passing a restaurant right now with fucking nobody outside. They're all shut down. Servers, bartenders, dishwashers, 
fucking general managers of these places, they're all getting affected. A lot of us are not salaried employees. There are some of us that are salaried employees, um, you know, like university professors, teachers. Fortunately, they are taken care of because they have a salary. Um, but who knows when that well is going to run dry as well, right? So um, there's a there was that fund that started up, and I think I think what's going to happen is there might be a couple other uh, funds that get kicked off as well. Uh, to help people in the in the service industry, you know. And uh, what I noticed with this fund is it kicked off on Sunday night, and then by Monday morning they were at ten thousand dollars. And I'm looking through, right? I was looking, I was scrolling through it this morning. Uh, most of the most of the donations are between ten and twenty bucks. A ton of people donated ten to twenty dollars. There's there's like one person that donated over six hundred dollars. There's a couple people that donated about a hundred bucks. And the idea is that uh, if you're a working artist, you do it full time. Um, you uh, put your name in, and uh, based on how much money they make, they will you know uh, kind of divvy out the funds via PayPal or what have you, and uh, and they just donate it to you so that you can survive. Um, which is very, which is incredibly nice, but it's a community-driven effort, and I have to imagine there's probably other cities, probably other people um, that have started uh, something like this, and this got spread around. In fact, and on my social media, I will be sharing that link out uh, soon, uh, and uh, and and I hope some people see it. I hope some people donate to it. Because I'm not the only one, especially in the city of Pittsburgh, that is a full-time working artist. There's a lot of actors uh, that are part of, uh, you know, the theater companies. There's a lot of theater companies, period, that have lost a lot of people, that have lost a shit ton of work. Um, and these people need your help. Uh, what, what, should, what should happen is, again, um, apartment complexes, um, you know... Uh, a- any sort of any sort of small business should should say, uh, you know what? If you can't pay your rent this month, that's okay. We're if we're not going to worry about it because this sucks. Uh, but they're not, you know. Uh, landlords are 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 notoriously don't. Uh, there's very I, I've never. I've met very few landlords and uh, and uh, real estate companies that have really kind of given a shit uh, about the people that live within their things. So, you know, it's up to us to help each other out. So these funds got started. Um, they're spreading around all over the fucking place. Um, and then something strange happened. And this is, this is why my head was going. My head was spinning last night. Uh, and I was like, should I just jump into my car and fucking do a spotlight and, uh, and you know, yell about this thing because it's crazy? Um, Facebook started scrubbing their entire platform of any sort of news surrounding COVID-19. So if you um, if you shared an article or a link. Uh, and I think it's related to the fundraising. I think it's very specifically related to And I'm going to get to that. And there's going to be a lot more detail uh, on my uh, podcast, Taboo Table Talk, about this subject, along with a, a lot more things uh, that I will be I will be talking about. Um, I don't think this video is going to be super, super long, by the way, either. So, But Facebook started scrubbing these stories. They were just fucking gone. Like, where the fuck did they go? They're all being marked as spam. They're going against community guidelines, uh, and it's like community guidelines. These are literally people that are that are trying to help uh, their fellow fellow other humans. You know, they're they're seeing people in trouble. They're seeing people that are that are stuck in a a, 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 a negative cycle. They're 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 seeing capitalism fucking failing as it fucking does as it's designed to do, and they're like, fuck it, we're gonna help each other out. Because we value art as a form of critical thinking. We value it to, to help us connect us to something bigger. 
we value service industry people that bring us our food, that cook for us when we go out. We value these sort of recreational items because people need that sort of stuff. So they started donating. Uh, and those, those, and when, when community efforts come together, any sort of intelligence com- agency hates that shit. And they start, they just start scrubbing it. They start getting rid of it. Because, because they don't want us to come together. What they're doing is that they're sowing they're sowing large amounts of discord within, within our society by getting rid of this. Because the initial thought is that somebody reported it. That's the initial thought. Who would report these posts of, of people helping each other? And I saw a lot of that. I saw a lot of people being like, who would report uh, my, the link I shared to this GoFundMe? Who would report uh, the link I shared to this to this grant that you can uh, you can uh, apply for, who would report this source? So who would report uh, a USA Today article talking about how the CDC and the FDA completely mismanaged this whole situation, or the Trump administration mismanaged this whole situation? Who would report the fact that Wall Street and the fucking uh, uh, airline companies and corporations are all getting bailed the fuck out? That's the first thing they fucking did. They bailed out the corporations. They bailed out Wall Street. $1.5 trillion injected into Wall Street. $50 billion to, to, to bail out the airline industries. What about the people that, <laughs> that use the airlines? Us, the regular people. We're not getting refunded on our flights. They're giving us credits. That's what the airline industry is doing. So the airline industry doesn't even need to fucking get bailed out because they're not even offering refunds. They're offering flight credits. So they're not even really losing money right now. So we decided to take it upon ourselves to help each other out. That's what, that's what community does. And the community in this circumstance is getting larger. It's not just about your neighborhood or your apartment complex or the street that you are on or the block. Or it's an entire city coming together and saying, yeah, we want to help our artists. We want to help our service industry people. We want to help everybody that is uh, you know, staying at home so we can get through this crisis and get back to our lives and live it the way that we want to live it. And the second that happens, the fucking intelligence fed book comes out and they're like, get rid of these fucking stories. Nobody say shit. Let's control the narrative. Let's erase anything, any sort of reporting about this virus and about how people can come together and about how people can help each other out. Let's just fucking erase it. That's what they did. And people are, people are going to get mad at each other because they'll go, I, oh, I bet it was that fucking guy. That guy that says that everything is a handout, that fucking guy, I bet it's him. I bet he fucking reported it because he hates people and he hates art and he thinks it's all liberal. Me- no, it's not. It's fucking Facebook. Facebook has, has ties to the intelligence communities. Zuckerberg last year met with the Trump administration. And here's the other thing, right? All of us are coming together to help each other out. The Trump administration jumped on the bandwagon that was spearheaded by Tulsi Gabbard and Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang has been talking about uh, universal basic income for uh, the entirety of his campaign. Uh, I, I do like the universal basic income. I think the universal basic income is, is what we need. It's the next step um, in, in, um, in, in creating balance in an unjust economic system. And Andrew Yang brought that to the light. He made fucking CNN reporters take it seriously. Um, You know. So Tulsi Gabbard came out and said, this is the time. And she came out last Friday, I believe. Or or at least last Friday was when I first saw it. uh, To to declare an emergency UBI that every month, every working American, every adult American should get $1,000 a month. Till the end of this crisis, at least. And then Mitt Romney jumped on board, and but didn't say it was going to be monthly. He just said, "Ah, oh, we're, we're just going to give you a thousand bucks. Just going to give you a thousand bucks." 
And then the Trump administration came out and said, yeah, I think we need to write a check to every American. We're not exactly sure how much that check is going to be, uh, but we're going to do that. So now the Trump administration's doing it, and all the establishment uh, establishment uh, assholes want to do it. And, you know, someone that's considered an outsider in the, in the realm of uh, American politics, Tulsi Gabbard, and realistically even Andrew Yang, even though he just endorsed the, the, the DNC star child, um, the, the poor Joe Biden, um, you know, they're going with his idea. So they don't want anything on a community based level. And this is, this is what happens. So, um, I've been, uh, I've been working on a piece about, uh, the history of the Black Panthers and why they are, why they are critical and crucial, uh, especially now, Right. Because because I think uh, we need to organize as uh, as a uh, as a unit as a citizen unit. Um, so I've been working on this history about what we can learn from what happened with them and what we can keep an eye out on and blah 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 blah. Huge history, a lot of research. Uh, I've watched like four different documentaries and interviews and articles and things of that sort. Uh, but I want to bring up something called COINTELPRO. COINTELPRO was an FBI um, counter, counterintelligence uh, program. J. Edgar Hoover was a uh, kind of uh, paranoid, racist uh, weirdo. Uh, and uh, basically, he was, he was worried about a black messiah. That's what he kept being worried about, black messiah, black messiah. That's what these people are always worried about, is the one person that's going to like unite everybody. Uh, and then they got to fucking get rid of them. That's what they do. I won't go into the, the major details of it because I'm writing about it, uh, <laughs> but uh, I know I'm being such a tease about it. But uh, when did COINTELPRO get used against the Black Panthers? When did COINTELPRO get used against Martin Luther King Jr.? Martin Luther King Jr. had COINTELPRO used against him um, when, uh, when he said that we need to be vocally against the Vietnam War. When he said that, that, that the middle class, the American middle class, whether they be white, brown, black, whatever skin color, the American middle class is used as cannon fodder for the, to, fight the, for, to fight rich people's wars. We're fighting, we're fighting for their interests, for their... Uh, fucking monetary needs. COINTELPRO was used against him once he started saying that shit. So when did COINTELPRO get used for uh, for the Black Panthers? Uh, when Bobby Seale instated his survival programs. This is uh, most famously the free breakfast for kids uh, where they basically went to store owners and said, hey, can you help us out? We want kids to be able to focus in school. Um, there's, you know, and, and they don't, they don't really get to, uh, you know, eat, um, they're missing meals and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And the government's not helping us out. So let's help each other out. So, uh, store owners and restaurants and stuff like that would, uh, would donate to them. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's not, it, and it wasn't just free food programs. It was also free healthcare um, you know, doctors and nurses and uh, clinics were opening their doors to poor people to run basic checks, and uh, they did a sickle cell anemia program, free ambulance rides, and and this was, I mean, this was a community-driven effort. This was not fucking. Um, this was not a government program. This is one hundred percent us helping each other out. It's nineteen sixty. I want to say. The survival programs. Don't quote me on this. I want to say 1967-68. COINTELPRO was launched around that time against the Black Panthers to sow discord within their own community. Uh, they manipulated members of the Black Panthers. They manipulated young people. They, um, you know, uh, held held a lot of things against uh, most of the members. Uh, most people that wanted to join, uh, people in the black community, 
Um, even white people that wanted to help the black community, the FBI held them hostage and, and, uh, yeah, it was specifically there to, to fuck with them and sow discord and all that shit. That's what they did. Why? J. Edgar Hoover was scared of that black messiah, right? And, and, and this messiah complex thing that they have, um, that's why they go after Bernie Sanders right now as much as they do, uh, because, you know, it's, uh, he, he's, he's sort of the face of democratic socialism. He's sort of the face of this movement. Um, so, you know, I, this shit's no different. We've been doing it for years. This is no one's notice. This is no one's paying attention. So the community-based efforts were, were, were trying, they were trying to squash it because it was spreading around. A lot of cities were doing it. People figured out, um, you know, uh, how to instate these programs, these survival programs in their cities. People were being trained, and 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 it was bringing a lot of people together. That's the concern of these of these places. When we come together, it's fucking scary to them. Because they don't get to control and exploit us through fear. Because now it's about cooperation. COINTELPRO is one of the largest reasons why the the Panthers are no longer around. For real. Like I said, a, a very large piece about this is going to be coming pretty soon. I'm going to be... Writing it over the next couple of days, uh, maybe in a, maybe in the next week or two, I'll be I'll be releasing these videos. I'll be uh, uh, you know launching a bigger video about it. Um, but um, this is no different. The Trump administration is finally on board with uh, with some sort of a UBI esque plan. Uh, even Ilhan Omar, last night I was looking on Twitter, Ilhan Omar was like, it's got to be $1,000 to every American adult and $500 for every child, period. And it's like, there's already a resolution in place. HB, I can't remember the number, but there, uh, the House bill that Tul- Tulsi Gabbard put out is already in place. Just vote for it. No compromise. The Democrats compromised. And now they're like, oh, shit, we need to, what do we, how do we look good? Because helping, uh, you compromised. So it's like everybody gets paid sick leave, okay? But it's only for companies uh, that have 500 employees or above. Fuck, I know a bunch of restaurants that don't have that, that are shut down, that are probably going to go under at this point. Same thing with the venues that I mentioned earlier. All those comedy clubs don't have 500 employees or above. That's not thinking about the common fucking man. And that was a Democrat compromise. We're done with compromising. Stop compromising us. So now the Trump administration came out and isn't compromising us. Is ready to just put out this in it, put out this action. Again, it's not monthly though. It's not totally UBI. But there's a resolution in place. So they don't want to look bad. So they're using it to scrub the internet, to scrub an entire platform of stories about uh, people helping each other and this administration and the establishment's incompetency. That's what they're doing. So, where do we go from here? Um, a, a friend of mine who writes for Minds, Mind Unleashed, great website you should check out. Very important, very, very important website. Uh, they do a lot of good independent journalism. Um, find different ways. Text the link out to people. Uh, send it through email. Send it through messenger. Send it through, uh, you know, Twitter so far is not scrubbing content related to, to COVID-19. Um, 
even YouTube, even YouTube made a made a thing where they put up this big bar at the top and it said, "Hey, our algorithms might just randomly get rid of videos that it believes is against community standards. We don't have any people in our offices to to check in on this stuff. So for a while, sometimes your videos might just be gone." Yeah, well you fu- you must have programmed the algorithm for certain things then. You program the algorithm for certain things. You can just make the algorithm not censor, uh, you know, uh, people that uh, talk about this or anti-establishment, anti-corporate sh- uh, shit. Because in the next couple of weeks, that that might start happening. Because they because that's what corporations do. They exploit us. They exploit the situation. They're trying to they're trying to control the narrative and exploit the situation. Facebook is getting rid of stories where we're helping each other out and the government's incompetency in dealing with this current situation. This is authoritarian. We're not a fucking democracy if this is the situation. And if the, and people are just fine with it. I mean, there was an uproar about it yesterday. There's a fucking uproar about it. it all over all over social media, there was an uproar about what was going on. And Zuckerfuck didn't say a goddamn word. Why would he? Because he orchestrated it. That's what he wants. The algorithm is programmed to scrub these fucking stories. If it is no different than what COINTELPRO did, because in 1975, fucking what is that? Eight years later, eight years later, seven or eight years after the free breakfast program, the survival programs, is when uh, Nixon Nixon uh, initiated um, uh, a meals program for kids. Because they don't want you to lose faith in them. They need that. They thrive on that. That's how they get their boners. It's the only way they can feel any sort of arousal. Is if they know that they can exploit American people. But, uh, but, that's, but that's how it's always been. And they're trying to do it again. The news media moves so fucking fast that most people's brain can't think in the scope of long term. This emergency UBI that Tulsi Gabbard proposed wasn't that fucking long ago. And people have forgotten that she's the one that did it based on how fast the news cycle moves. Based on how easily we are exploited right now. So, you know, right now is the time uh, for a couple different things, right? Because, as I mean, as we've talked about in this whole fucking video, uh, when we start helping each other and they realize that, uh, you know, there's strength, in, there's strength in numbers in us, that maybe we don't fucking need a bunch of out-of-touch oligarchs to take care of us. That, you know what? We're going to take control of our own economy. We're going to take control of our own destiny. We're going to help out the people that the fucking government's not helping out. That's what the government's supposed to be there for. The government's supposed to be there for these large, systemic um, ways to help the populace. To maintain order when there's a heightened level of chaos. This is a heightened level of chaos, and the government's supposed to be there to help us. But all they've been doing is creating more fucking chaos. So, they will sow discord using, using any, by, by any means necessary. They go by the any means necessary situation. Facebook scrubs it. I mean, today, I was standing outside uh, the bank, um, and, uh, and I lost service in an area I've never fucking lost service before. I was talking to a friend of mine about this right before, right before I, I, I was making this video. And I lost service in the area I've never fucking lost service. I'm just sitting here going, what the fuck is happening right now? I wouldn't be surprised if the internet service providers uh, either uh, slow speeds down or cut services to certain areas, just period, you know, um, black black us out. I wouldn't be surprised if all this shit is on its way. I wouldn't be surprised. So what's important right now is us helping each other out. This is not the time 
for people to, uh, to, to, to isolate themselves, you know, aside from, hey, don't go fucking visit your grandparents and shit, keep your hands washed, but it's, it's time to really look out for one another. If you have the means to help somebody, please help somebody. If somebody's like, hey, I, I, when I went to the grocery store, all, all, all the canned food was gone and I don't know what the fuck to do, and you have 39 cans of fucking soup, fucking send some cans of soup over to, your, over to this guy, person. Help them out. You don't, need to, you don't need to hoard stuff. Capitalism is, is not helping us in this situation. It's very evident that capitalism is not helping us in this situation. So instead of letting this discord, instead of these these blackouts and scrubs that are happening all throughout uh, all throughout this 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 fucking platform, if we take a moment to figure out alternative means of sharing these stories, um, and what I might do is is collect a bunch of resources and send it out to my email list. That might be a thing to do. I uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to overly bother a lot of people uh, via the email list. But I think now we're gonna have to. Um, but seriously, I, I might. I might just do that. I think. I think if you know of anybody and you have a, a, a decently sized email list, um, please, please send it out. Send it out to people and get the word out about about some of these funds. Um, some of the ways that people can help each other out, uh, you know, don't, don't let this, don't let this social media scrub, uh, get in your way. Don't, don't let it discourage you. Don't let it, uh, m- you know, uh, make you fight your neighbor because your neighbor has, uh, some different political beliefs. And guess what? We're all fucking in this shit together. We're all, we're all struggling through it. We're all kind of getting antsy and, and, and don't know what to do, you know? Uh, this is the time that we need to take care of each other. That's what we have to do. That's the most important thing. Um, help each other in any way that you uh, you can. It doesn't have to be financially. There are other ways that you can help each other. We might need each other uh, mentally, spiritually, um, you know, several different ways. There, there, the people, people need to. This is this is the time that we have to come together as a community. This is the time that we have to look at it and go. You know what? This looks like fucking COINTELPRO, Pro, and I ain't gonna fucking. Ba- uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna play that shit. I'm not gonna be hyper paranoid about that. That's what we need to do. Th- this is the time for us to do that. So I, I sincerely, sincerely hope that that um, um, you know people don't get discouraged to share these GoFundMe's, the, the, these grants and all these other things because, because you know, the Trump administration and Steve Mnuchin came out and said, well, we think we might be giving some people some money. Great. They might. They might not. I mean, Tulsi Gabbard has put this resolution on the table since last Friday and it's, and it's almost a week since they've made any decisions and there's like nine different people trying to take credit for this, some of this shit. Ilhan Omar has her plan that she's like, I'm going to put it to vote and there's going to be no compromise. And it's like, yeah, but there's already something there. There's already something in place right now on a monthly basis that you can help us out. The CDC should be should be listening to, to, to researchers and uh, we should be we should be giving out free tests to people. And if there is an inoculation that comes up, that should also be free. Uh, this is not the time for corporations to try to fucking capitalize on shit. And that's what and, and like I said earlier, that's what they do. They try to capitalize and exploit the situation. Facebook is scrubbing shit. They're controlling the narrative to make sure that people don't lose faith in the fucking government. Even though they even though what the fuck has the government done for us? They've known about this shit since January. And YouTube is YouTube is saying that they're going to do the same thing. Oh, we'll just uh, the well, we kind of gave it to the algorithms to control. But you program the algorithms. So any sort of anti-establishment, any sort of alternative voices, small channels like this, could, there could be some dangers of that. So that's where we're at right now. Um, please don't get discouraged. Please find alternative methods of sharing this stuff. It might have to be emails. It might have to be, you know, if you have an email list, we might have to ramp that up. I'm sorry. I know it seems annoying. Um, 
if that's the case. But, uh, you know, um, that might be what we need to do because social media is not doing us any favors right now. How long till Twitter jumps on board with it? How long till Instagram jumps on board with this? Please don't lose... Please don't lose the hope. We, we have hope. We are the hope. Just the, just the incredible amount of generosity that I saw the day that I got off the road. When I was, ha- when I was seriously very concerned about what the fuck I was going to do. I had, a bunch of, I, I had a couple people join up with, with my Patreon. I had a couple people send me donations. I had a bunch of people sp- uh, purchase my album off of Bandcamp. Which you can do all, do all of those things, by the way. Uh, if you have the means to. I mean, the generosity that I saw was incredible. And that's not the government helping us out. That's people helping each other out. So let's not lose that momentum. The point of them scrubbing these stories the, is, is to sow the discord, to discourage us from, from actually carrying the movements forward. What they want is violence to equate violence with protest, to equate violence with with certain movements so that we we don't support them as much please don't lose please don't lose that 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 encouragement keep helping each other out please be good to each other out there i'm very concerned about it keep your eyes out this is the time to sharpen those critical thinking skills watch those narratives see how quickly they're going to change don't don't let the the speed at which things are coming at you um, make you forget what happened in the previous week. Make you forget that that you know what happened a month ago. Make you forget our own history because I think that's part of the way that this stuff is designed. Everything comes at you so fast, so fast, you know. But uh, I'm going to bring this video to a close because I got to get back inside uh, and, uh, and start writing. <laughs> That's the plan. Uh, I've been kind of driving around the, the neighborhood a little bit. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate people that are subscribed to this channel, people that have already donated, like I said, people that have purchased the album. Um, everything is going to be available on my website. There is one spot that you can go to. Uh, to to find all of the information that you need to to donate to my stuff uh, or share my stuff. Uh, that's my website, ramanoodlescomedy.com. R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. That's going to uh, have all of my videos, all of my podcasts. Uh, there's a specific page uh, called Donate where you, where you can find um, sustaining memberships that you can be a part of directly on the website, uh, my Patreon, my PayPal, which you can also become a sustaining member of, Venmo Cash App. There's a variety of different ways. Uh, if you have the means to help, um, I would particularly appreciate it. But there's also a ton of other people um, that do need your help. So, uh, you know, if, if I'm not going to be mad if you decide to, to go help uh, someone else. You know, if if you if if there's a local person that you are like, hey, I would give you ten bucks, but I gotta buy, the, yeah, fucking, let, yeah, yeah, go do it, go do that, hundred uh, percent. Help each other out. That's uh, that's that's the whole thing. Don't be discouraged by the um, by the waves of censorship that are coming, um, because that's what it is. Uh, you know. Um, Okay, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for to make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Make sure you're paying attention to what's coming out, um, because especially to the alternative media voices that are out there. Uh, I'm uh, there. There is going to be. Uh, I, I am going to be putting out a lot of content. That's that's my plan right now. Uh, whether they're looser and ranty or kind of like this, uh, but I'm also working on more constructed, uh, written pieces. Um, and I'm also going to be working on a new show as of right now in mid April, I'm getting back on the road. Uh, so I hope to see you guys on tour. Um, yeah, thank you guys. And, uh, we'll see you on the road. Stay safe and be good to each other.